on guys we're turning me back with another video today i'll be doing a video on the setup i have so for instance the chisels i have the phone holders and the laid i use so um let's get started so first off the laid i have is a record laid it is an older model it's not uh, like a newer model like the record powered green ones this is an older model uh, they stopped making them i'm not sure what year but they stopped making them so um the only place you can get them is second hand nowadays but um, the phone holders I use are just these flexible phone holders that I purchased off eBay. Uh, they were I think, a couple of years and um, as you can see they open up, you put your phone in and then this can tilt up and down and you can bend this whatever way you want. So I have two of these, I have yet to use this one. But you have seen this one in the videos, I use it for the overhead views which look like this. And um, the other phone holders I use are just homemade ones that I just made. Um, there are p pieces of PVC pipe that I just took. Uh, I just put a little slit in it so the phone could fit in it. And then I put some tape and some blanket in it. So it didn't damage or scratch the phone screen. I have two of these. The white one is longer and the black one is shorter. But um, yeah, now we're going to move on to the chisels I have. So I have a very small spindle gouge i'm not sure what size i have a roofing gouge a um inch wide spindle gouge a quarter inch spindle gouge a parting tool and a skew chisel so um each one does different jobs so for instance the roofing gouge is for uh, roughly shaping and taking the bark off wood the spindle gouges are for smaller work designs and that um, the parting tool is for doing the tenons and the stuff like that and the skew chisel is for skewing the wood and some people can use them for shaping the wood and that I am not that good yet but I hope to be that good someday but um, now I'm going to move on to the other chisel I have so see you in a minute guys so guys I have this Hamlet um, bowl gouge it's made by Hamlet and it is a very good bowl gouge now i've tested out a few different bowl gouges before but the hamlet seemed to be the best i really like them i just think they're such a good tool Um, you don't have to sharpen them much and they re retain a nice edge nice sharp edge all the time um so let's move on so in my videos you haven't seen it yet but if I'm making something like a wand or a little tenant or something, I have these set of calipers. They are parkside calipers, which means they are sold in Lidl's and Aldi and places like that. So they're not the best, but they do what I need to do. So in my videos, you will also see that I do a lot of, um, obviously, the polishing and the applying the finish and the sanding. So I just have a book of sandpaper just loads of different kinds i got this i got uh, the sandpaper in crown i'm not sure if anyone of you would know what that where that is but there's a local one near me and then um, that's where i get it and it's cheap enough for a roll i also have a little tin with rags in it so that's for applying the finish it just saves me having to go cut them all up I just have them in the tin and every now and then i just need to restock it so i also have a 19 millimeter spanner which is used for the nut on the tool rest and the tail stock as you can see so that's what that's used for i usually hang that up here with a 35 uh, sorry 25 millimeter um spanner for removing the chuck off of the lathe but um i also in my shop i also have a tennis ball now some people might laugh at this, but I find that a tennis ball is really handy to have because if you do a bowl or more and pestle or something like that, and you uh, have say you have shaped the bowl and all, you get the shape you want, and you go to move, remove the uh, tenant on the back because you don't like the tenant, um, instead of having to damage the wood again, you can hollow it out, put the tennis ball into the bowl part which is the part that dips down. Put the tennis ball into that, tighten up the tail stock, and just get rid of the tennis that one. Well, that's what I do anyway. But um, I also have a center find. This I got off a friend, and then 
I use it all the time. I use it for square pieces, round pieces, any pieces, you name it. But um, now some of the wood I have, I have some purple hair. I have some walnut. And I have loads of different kinds. There's anywhere from zebrano to you to cherry to beach to iraqa. I also have more wood down here. There's hawthorn, there's oak and loads of other two uh, wood down there and then the same here there's oak heart on and loads of different kinds of wood down there as well um next moving on to i'm going to show you my sandmaster which is made by robert sorby um it's a great tool i use it a lot so i'm just gonna fetch it and i'll be back to use it in a minute so this is the sandmaster i have again it's made by robert sorby it is a brilliant tool this is for sanding bowls and stuff like that it's just if you don't want to get your hand too close to the edge or anything like that you just use this uh, the head rotates which gives it a lot more uh, better sanding and stuff like that i also have a little uh, radio that sometimes i just listen to a bit of music while i'm on the lathe but um because of copyright i have to be careful of what i listen to on it and i don't really listen to it so. Yeah. I also have a DeWalt drill. DeWalt is a brilliant make. I'm a big fan and um, I've never had a problem with it. I use that for drilling the holes. Um, for if I want to, say I want to go four inches deep into a bowl or a mortar and pestle or a goblet or anything like that, all I have to do is just drill the hole and know that's how deep I'm going and I just hollow out the bowl with that. So um, I also have these calipers. Now I'm not Showing the uh, correct names for these, but um, please let me know if you know. All I know is that this caliper is used for measuring the diameter of a piece on the outside. And these ones I use for measuring the diameter on the inside of the wood. But um, I usually just hang them up um, next to the spanners, as you can see just here. But um, I like to keep a lot of my tools close together, so if I'm on the lead, I just grab it. So I have my saws here, and if I need them, I can just grab them. But um, I also have a pair of goggles up here. Now, you will see that I use a little small pair of goggles. Um, they're actually right here. These are the ones I use the most. Now, I do use this GVS uh, respiratory mask with goggles attached. But the reason I don't wear this during the videos is just a lot easier for me to talk with the smaller one, which is up here. So, as I said, it's just a lot easier for me to talk with the smaller one, the smaller one on because I can, if I have it on, I can move it down. Whereas the big one, the goggles are going to be covering my mouth. So, this is what I use in the videos. But I usually use this one when I'm not making videos. But um, I also have just a random office chair that was in my attic and I just took it out here so I could use it. Um, I also have some carving chisels um, I got for my birthday and um, just a lot of other stuff. Now the finishes I use are, I'm a really big fan of Danish oil because um, it's just such a good, such a good finish. It, you haven't to worry about any dripping or excess because it just soaks into the wood so well. So I have a bottle of it here. I need to get more actually. I also like natural cream breeze wax or oh, yeah, boy wax. It's really good and it gives really nice polish. I do have this second tin of beeswax, but however I do not. I haven't tested it yet so I don't know what it's like. But um I also have a load of tins of WD40. It's really important to keep your lathe clean and well oiled so that nothing gets stuck. But um, yeah, um, that's pretty much my setup. Um, I have a light above blade that was just off an old lamp, and my stepfather helped me attach it up to the um, to the beams up up in the ceiling. So um, that's pretty much it for the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you guys enjoyed this video. If you think I did a rubbish job, if you think I did a good job. If you think that, if you know the name of anything that I mispronounced or I just didn't know the name, if you know any of that, please leave a comment down, down below. I will be really appreciative of it. And um, thanks for watching, guys. See ya.
So guys, we're turning me back again. Um, I'm just uh, editing the video. I just want to say I apologize for the slow replies or the M's or the S. Um, I'm gonna try to get better. There I did it. Just did it again. But uh, I'm trying to get better at it, and hopefully I will get better. But uh, I apologize for it was quite a long, tedious video. Um, I don't mind if you don't want to watch it, but um, it would help. So uh, please like and subscribe. So thanks for watching, guys. See ya.